Welcome to Baskin Livestock. We're here today to take a look at our food waste processing recycling facility. We, we bring in a lot of different materials from about 50 food manufacturers throughout the Northeast, as far west as Indiana, as far south as Delaware, all the way through New England, all upstate New York, Pennsylvania. We try to segregate based on quality. We, keep, we do three or four potato chip plants, which we consider our high fat and dry, that we keep here separate in a pile. We got seven receiving doors for different kind of products. We just recently started adding some high solid liquid type materials that we receive in tankers that will blend off with drier material to make go through our system. Uh, all different kind of mostly dairy based products that add quite a lot of value to our feed. We try to segregate the rest of our products by quality also. We get uh, a lot of cookies, crackers. We keep the drier end of the material here. We get a lot of confectionery and chocolate materials. Some comes in, a lot of it comes in on walking floor dump or ejector trailers that we dump up here and push in the building. The, the floor level below us is eight feet below us, so we can, we can hold quite a lot of material in the building and everything is segregated by what it is. We get a, a lot of packaged waste that comes from all different parts. We're, we're pretty much all pre-consumer, so we're manufacturing waste and distribution waste. There's a lot of return goods that, that out of shelf life that need to come back that otherwise would have gone to the landfill that we're recycling and reprocessing. So we, we try to keep it all se segregated by, by quality, like I said. We, we handle a lot of breads and doughs, donuts, cookies, cakes, uh, bread, bread buns, bread rolls, bread, bread itself. During the night, we, we mix up a formula of all our ingredients based on quality to keep our product consistent. So when we're done, at the end of the night, we've got a big pile of pre, what we call premix. The, the premix is a little bit of everything mixed to a recipe to keep our product consistent. It's put into a feed box, which meters the feed into our system. We can walk around this way. The basis of our fuel, we're unloading a load of fuel right now, is shredded pallets and shredded wood. We're permitted to burn wood, the wood as a fuel. In addition, we're up to 30% by weight of the paper and plastic and cardboard that we pull out of the process. So once the product arrives here, we're able to take out the edible waste portion, recycle it. We're using the plastic, the paper, the cardboard, any, any contaminant that comes with it, we're using that for fuel to help dry the material. It usually works out pretty good that we're just where we need to be on our permit. Sometimes we're long and we stockpile it, sometimes we're short and we use a little more wood, but we, we can stay pretty consistent with it. It's, it's a very sustainable green operation. We're, uh, you know, and it's guaranteed certified label destruction. There's nothing leaves here at the end of the day after a couple thousand tons of feed in and out the door. All we ship out is probably uh, about a ton of ash that goes to the landfill. That's all, that's all we're getting rid of here. That's our waste product. So it's less than a half a percent. We're, we're in our fuel room now. Like I said, the basis of our fuel, 70% or better, is ground wood. It's, it's dimensional boards, it's pallets that are no good that we buy for fuel. And the other small percentage is the paper and plastic from the process. It's all been mechanically removed from the incoming material, shredded down to a size that will go in and mix up well in the burner and, and burn. It's all incinerated here. It's, we, we take it, we mix it. Our fuel hopper's here. It's automatically, it automatically feeds the burner. It's, the computer calls for fuel as it needs. You'll see the, the, the shaker turn on and turn off. The computer's calling for fuel as it needs it to maintain the right temperature in the burner, it's assure proper combustion and, uh, and proper drying of our material as it goes through the system. If you come outside, you can see our stack. All you're seeing is uh, the moisture, the, the water that we're driving off the feed being emitted into the air. It's a clear stream. It's because it's a cool day, you get a little bit of a white color, but it's fairly clear. That's what we're looking for. We're just 
driving off the moisture up into the atmosphere. The feed's entered in a, in a feed in feed box, which feeds the shredder, which feeds the dryer. The wet feed travels through the dryer, discharging its dry feed on the other end of the dryer. The dry feed with paper and plastic is then transferred to a screening system to remove all the contaminants, regrind and re-screen the overs, overs back for fuel, the fines are the feed that we're looking for. Inside our control room, the computer is the brains of the operation. We set the feed for the temperature we want. We've set it for 140, currently it's at 141. It monitors inlet temperature, outlet temperature. We can change the flow of the material and it constantly takes care of itself as if it's the feed drops below, it pulls back on heat. If the feed drops, comes above, it pulls back, if the, feed, the heat goes down. It automatically monitors everything. Everything else is interlocked also, so if we have a problem in the drum, it stops everything behind it. It's all on amp sensors and motion sensors, so everything's interlocked, spark detection, fire prevention. This is, this is critical to our operation right here to ensure that we're sending a material that's the proper dryness and the proper quality for our customers' needs. Everything's set up, our PLCs, everything's PLC driven. We've got a modem connection if we need a, someone to uh, reprogram, make changes. It can do, be done remotely from the programmer's office or to troubleshoot problems every once in a while, all these moving pieces, you will have an issue. A piece of equipment in front of us is a trommel screen. We screen it with a trommel screen. It's the most efficient, simplest way to do it and for our intents and purposes. After it drops through the trommel screen, it goes through a, another set of magnets. There's several sets of magnets in here to ensure that there's no steel contamination in the product as well. This magnet here will take out a thumbtack out of 40 ton an hour of feed, which we don't quite push it at 40 tons. But it's pretty clean, dry feed, very little contamination in it. It goes through a secondary mill to help cool it and to reduce the size before it's conveyed out to the loadout bays to be put on trucks to be shipped out. Presently, we're running 24-5, starting Sunday night at 6 o'clock till Friday night at 6 o'clock, 24 hours. We receive a lot of products on van trailers also, some in super sacks. We recycle the super sacks, we bale them and recycle them. We're just waiting to collect enough to recycle. And our end product comes out here on the conveyors to the loadout bays. Every load that we send out, we pull a retained sample to ensure if there's any kind of question at any point in time on the quality of the product, we have a retained sample from every load. We also send samples to the lab daily, not daily, three or four times a week um, to ensure that our quality is what we want it to be. operator will write on it the customer's name, the date, ticket number, and it's all stored in the rare instance that we need to go back and see if there was an issue with a load of feed. Outgoing trucks are pulled in, they're all primarily loaded bulk. If it's a walking floor, hopper, dump trailer, uh, this load happens to be going to a New York feed mill. It's a long-term customer. Feed's loaded inside where it's kept dry. If the bad weather, we put the doors down on the ends of the bay. So the feed's made dry, stored dry, 
loaded into a dry trailer, tarped off, and sent to the customer dry. Approximately a couple thousand tons a week go out the door, dry material, to feed mills from Pennsylvania to Maine and all over New York and New England and into Canada, Ontario and Quebec both. In February of 2015, we built a new shop to take care of our growing fleet of trucks and trailers and all kinds of machinery and equipment. This is the office of the shop. It looks out over a four bay shop that we added to our existing facility. Drive through bays on three of them, a project work bay on the end and uh, gives the guys a lot more room to get stuff done. It's easier to get trailers in. They're 100 foot long bays and we'll take a walk. We've got a parts room that we added on to also. We try to stock a little bit of everything for whatever we need. So if a truck comes in on a Saturday afternoon and needs a brake job, a battery, a fan belt, or a light switch, or whatever, it's, it should be here on the shelves ready to go. All in a computer system so we can track the cost of doing business, the cost of keeping the equipment moving, try to make educated decisions on which pieces of equipment to keep and which pieces of equipment to replace and which piece, what kind of equipment to replace it with based on the experience we've had in the past with it. Three drive-through bays and a, and a project bay for longer term, bigger projects that it's easy for a heated floor. It's nice and warm in the winter time, well ventilated in the summertime. Try to get the work done as efficiently and as well as possible. We're, we're trying to be proactive about our maintenance and keep everything moving and all the guys happy and safe and comfortable. Well, thanks for taking the time for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or email us or contact us any way you like. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you and answer any questions or address any concerns you might have. Thanks again.